let's say you are at home and you have uh, a browser with internet access and you want to perform literature survey and deliver a document so how do we go about here is some help so I have a set of lectures that I have recorded as part of NPTEL MOOC on introduction to research so these lectures have uh, the following uh, aspects covered the four of them are actually on a panel discussion on what constitutes research and then I have an overview on literature survey which you can go through to see what are the different strategies to arrive at a set of references for your document there are two videos that show you how to do literature survey using web of science and scopus these two are subscription based uh, indexing services so if your university has paid the subscription then you will have access to these two resources i have also put up a video on how to wrap up this literature survey into a document and uh, this document should contain the references and using BibTeX references you can make a latex document that looks good for presentation and this has been illustrated in one of the videos if you are used to a visual environment to prepare your document using Microsoft Word then uh, you can actually make use of these bibliographic sources as XML format and that is described in one of these videos and you can also enter manually these references at the end of the document using EndNote and that's also described now comes the question that uh, you are actually at home and you don't have access to these resources that are subscribed for you from your university so what do we do so here is the scenario how it works uh, most of the uh, websites that offer uh, subscription based services for uh, journal articles or indexes actually will recognize uh, who is authorized to access these uh, resources from the specific IP address from which they come so when you are actually working from your campus your computer is actually connected through the LAN to the gateway and this gateway has a specific IP address which is then recognized by the subscription service such as for example web of science and uh, they have already received the subscription payment so they will then provide you uh, the article which you can receive now when you are not in campus this is not so so what happens when you are not in campus is as follows uh, your campus is still having this uh, subscription so you are eligible to have access to it so somebody in the university in the IT department should provide you with what is called the virtual private network access so that from outside the campus you connect to the VPN that will give you visibility as if you are from the campus and through the campus access you can then access the subscription services so the subscription service provider is looking at you as if you are coming from the campus and then you will be able to receive the document so it would actually be routed through the campus or through the VPN onto your computer now this is a scenario when you are actually having a situation where uh, university you are belonging to has these subscriptions now what happens when you are actually all by yourself that is your university does not have any subscription or you are actually not part of any university so you are then trying to access the subscription services directly as an individual and you would not get anything back because you have not paid the subscription so in this scenario it is important to then see what are the different other sources where without any subscription fees maybe with some limited access you can actually see some of the archival literature sources and they are as follows so indexing services as these are called are actually falling into two major categories which is subscription based or free and open so there's a third category which is uh, given here as a third party because they charge you some money for some uh, specific access but uh, there are some basic services which are free so uh, while Scopus and Web of Science are subscription based uh, there are also a large number of uh, indexing services that are free 
and uh, the first of them will be Google Scholar. So please do try it out for accessing articles during the time when you are not able to reach any of these sources of literature through your university subscriptions. And uh, there is a website uh, which is uh, uh, quite recent semanticscholar.org. Uh, this site actually is powered by artificial intelligence techniques so that they can map the articles, the sources and uh, different connections between uh, these fields to arrive at the impact of an article, impact of a citation etc. So it's a pretty good website uh, and you should explore that. Uh, ResearchGate is again uh, quite popular today uh, and you should look at it because uh, you can actually gain access to the complete text of the article uh, because once you logged in then this sharing becomes peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, with the consent from the author of the article uh, which is permitted by the copyright so you have ability to get access to some of the full text once you are a member of the research gate uh, website which is actually free uh, there is another website called crossref.org which is quite useful for those who work in the physics related topics. You can actually look at uh, articles uh, across a large number of uh, publishers using this website. Harvard actually also has a repository uh, of articles in physics and astronomy uh, and it has a very powerful uh, user interface. You should uh, look at it for uh, subjects that fall in the broad category of uh, physics. Most of the physicists actually submit their uh, manuscripts uh, to archive.org website to have a timestamp on when they submitted the manuscript for review. And uh, this preprint is as good as the final uh, paper and you will have access to it in the complete text uh, form on this website. So have a look at it for some of the articles and uh, you may want to also check whether such an article has been published in a journal later then you can revise the reference of that article to that of the journal. There is also a website from the Microsoft uh, uh, under the Microsoft Academic uh, Sir, indexing service which is also quite good in searching for articles in a particular domain. Third party sites like Academia, uh, you can actually log in and have access to some of the articles and if you are willing to pay a small amount uh, every month then you can have much broader access. Same thing similar is also possible with uh, Mendeley. So you may want to have a look at them in case you have this requirement of looking at uh, articles for a uh, long duration. So to prepare a document based upon your literature survey then uh, you have ability to do it over the browser and with just an internet connection without having to install anything on your computer. And today that is possible in two different manners. One is the visual manner uh, where you have uh, an environment where as you type you can see how it is going to look like when you print. And this is offered by the Microsoft 365 or Office 365 environment. The files are stored on OneDrive. The free subscription that is available on this uh, is quite uh, good for uh, most of our basic needs. And uh, there is also a equally powerful uh, environment using Google Docs. Uh, the files will be stored on Google Drive. You can also uh, look at that to make some of your documents. My own uh, favorite uh, would be the programmatic way of preparing a document mainly because it uh, gives you a lot of control on how the information will be uh, rendered and uh, many features such as uh, automatically listing the contents, uh, the list of figures, uh, list of uh, tables, numbering of equations uh, and then the references at the end of the document sorted in a particular manner. All of these actually quite uh, easily uh, done in uh, a LaTeX uh, programming uh, environment which is for the document preparation which is fully free and uh, there is a service available uh, on Overleaf uh, which is a browser based service to make this uh, LaTeX document preparation quite easy. Uh, it is uh, freely available for a limited number of uh, documents I think but uh, you can also pay for uh, unlimited storage if you are interested. So my suggestion is that use this uh, free time at uh, home to learn more about uh, how to prepare articles using the latex environment and uh, store your uh, documents uh, on Overleaf 
you can share them with uh, some others and collaboratively author the documents and then have fun preparing your documents on literature survey in this uh, period when you are stuck at home but have access to internet and a browser when it comes to typesetting documents i would recommend uh, the latex environment and here we have uh, a website which uh, helps you know more about the so called latex project so look at this website uh, get to know about the latex environment uh, the tools are available for all platforms and what is interesting today is that uh, we have a web based uh, latex uh, document preparation system available at the website uh, overleaf.com so you can see the uh, website is uh, allowing you to register uh, for an account uh, using a google account and uh, then you can actually get into the system uh, readily uh, i have already created my account and i will do that with my uh, google id you can start a new document in overleaf by clicking on the link new project on the left hand side menu you could choose example project under the menu and uh, give the name so let us say uh, write up uh, one for example and what uh, overleaf does is uh, open the document with uh, some text that is already uh, put in uh, for us to see okay and uh, it has uh, three panes the first pane uh, shows the files the second pane shows the actual text that is used uh, to compile the document the third pane shows the preview of the pdf document created from the tech file so the tech file is what is there in the middle you can edit it now and uh, uh, let me start editing by first making the document uh, of a4 uh, paper size and 12 point font okay and i recompile and the paper size is now uh, reset to a4 now we can change the title of the document here and uh, i want to illustrate uh, a literature survey on a topic called undercooling so i would say a, a brief overview of undercooling okay and uh, we can keep the date as uh, we like and you could see that immediately on the pane on the right hand side pdf uh, overview you have this uh, uh, title and the author name everything coming quite neatly the text can be edited so here you could edit the text as you like so i would just edit it in this manner uh, here comes a brief overview of the top under coding to illustrate how to use openly available literature sources during the lockdown time okay and compile and you would see the text has changed there now this image you could actually change it by uploading it on the first pane uh, using the upload button and once you change you can copy uh, the file name at this location okay without the dot jpg ending uh, if you want the image to be scaled you can use this number to change and the caption you can caption can be given okay here and here is a label which you use to refer to the figure in the text okay so how do we uh, refer we can write it here uh, the figure reference and reference is ready available shows uh, a sample image of our neighbors so compile this now you would see that we are actually making a reference to the figure the figure number is 1 so this reference to the figure called universe is now translated to 1 because we have one figure there if you add more figures then the numbers will keep incrementing uh, automatically now you have in the bottom uh, the bibliography uh, given 
and references is the name of the file uh, which contains the uh, bibliographic uh, items and there is a file called references.pip which contains these items so let us have a look at it how does it look like so it contains the uh, nickname for the bibliographic item here you see here and it contains the title author and other details as required for the type of bibliographic item so for an article uh, the items will be slightly different from a book or a conference proceedings so our idea of doing literature survey is to pick up these details for every article that we want to refer so we could actually pick them up from various literature uh, sources and i will be illustrating that shortly okay so let us just uh, start using the literature sources and the first one i would show you is using the google scholar so we go to scholar.google.in and uh, here let us say i want to search for uh, under cooling and there are a bunch of articles that will come so let us say we want to uh, look at the article we just click on the article title here if the pdf is available for free you can look at it otherwise at least you can look at the uh, abstract and decide whether that's a suitable article for your survey and once you uh, pick up an article that is suitable and you want to talk about it you will have to pick up the bibliographic details of that particular article so uh, let us uh, do that for example for this article and look at the uh, image of uh, the quote symbol here it's a site so when you click on that you would uh, see the citation of that particular article and uh, the different ways of rendering that bibliographic item are uh, illustrated here and we can choose the style uh, uh, as we like uh, while preparing the latex file so the information can be obtained in four different formats and we will pick up in the format of bibtech so click on that and uh, you would see that the uh, data is available ready for us. You can copy paste it. Okay, copy and paste it in the references file below. Okay, now uh, this is a uh, nickname for that particular uh, item, bibliographic item. We have to have it unique for every item and we can keep it as small as we like. So, will day 06 is sufficient for us to say, and uh, we can come here and make a reference to that. So, we can hey, say here. Will they at all have studied under cooling recently? Let us say, and uh, we make a citation of that, and it's readily available for us to pick up and uh, click on that here. And when you recompile, you would notice that the text we entered is given with the reference as number two, and the second reference is the bibliographic item that we just entered so this way we can actually start adding uh, the different uh, references to the document so shortly we will see how we can pick up these uh, uh, reference details that we can copy paste in the bib file one after other the second way of uh, obtaining uh, literature from uh, publicly available literature sources is uh, research gate and uh, let us open that site uh, here also you need to register and log in i have already done that uh, by logging in with my google account uh, in case you have not logged in uh, how the screen looks like is like this uh, you could log in using your linkedin account or google account or facebook account i have uh, registered with my uh, account already so i would log in okay so i have logged in and uh, we can readily start searching for articles under uh, a particular topic so i choose the same topic and look at the articles so here in various tabs you have uh, various types of hits for this keyword so we go to the tab under publications and uh, here we see different publications that match the criterion which we gave namely the keyword saying uh, it should contain uh, undercooling in uh, the abstract or in the title etc so we can actually uh, request for the file and we can get it if the author has made it available on the site which actually is a very nice way because we don't need subscription to the journal that way uh, it is coming from a clause in the copyright where uh, authors can actually share directly 
an article of their publication to those who they get a request from over email. So let us pick some article that we want to refer and uh, here is one article let us say I want to refer. So we can actually look at the uh, full text by requesting for it and read it to see whether it is suitable for our survey. Now assuming that it is suitable, uh, we now need to have the bibliographic data for that uh, article. So here uh, beside the uh, link request full text there is a button which if you click uh, there is a item available here to export the citation so click on that and uh, you can actually export the citation in different formats biptech is a format that we choose and the citation is adequate for us to do now when you click on the download button uh, it would actually open uh, the uh, file as a uh, downloadable bib file and you can open that and copy paste the bibliographic information so i have done that i have copied and uh, here i can then paste that information from that file and come to the main file here to make a reference to that and uh, here is where we want to make a reference okay and uh, uh, look at the details uh, uh, it is zero long, so we we'll write it here. Zero long at all have so the nickname for the article we just gave uh, happens to be just the word article itself. That's not good. So what we do is. Uh, we will uh, give the name of the author followed by the two digits for the year and then we would uh, use the same thing to make a reference here so here we would make reference same way and then uh, it would actually be able to use that uh, new nickname you can do this kind of a modification of the nicknames uh, at any point make sure that what you have referred in the text is matching with what is there in the bib file so here you can see jolong et al have studied anthropology the reference number is 3 and the article that we have just now picked up is listed in reference number 3 here with the full details formatted now this formatting is uh, in a particular way which is called the plain simple formatting where the authors names are used in the references to uh, do a sorting and uh, not necessarily uh, in the sequence of addition to the document so what we can actually do is that change this to i strictly transactions format and recompile so what it will do is that it will actually make it in the sequence that we have referred okay so this is quite useful so build a first reference geolong second reference and the automatic reference that came with the template is third one Okay, so it is in the same sequence that we have in the uh, document. Okay, this is useful because as you know move the text back and forth the reference sequences will be adjusted. You can illustrate that in the following manner. I move this uh, text before and now I expect that if I compile uh, Zeolong's uh, reference should be uh, the first one. Okay, and uh, you can then Verify that it has come. Uh, Zeolong's reference is the first one. Builders is the second one, as it appears in the text. So this kind of an automatic uh, uh, sequencing uh, is uh, taken care by Natec, and it's very useful, particularly when you write articles with large number of uh, references. So now the next uh, method to download the bibliographic. Uh, items I will show using a website called Semantic Scholar. So Semantic Scholar is a website that uses uh, artificial intelligence techniques to uh, link up the various literature uh, data and to also uh, arrive at the uh, most impactful uh, uh, references or citations article etc. You also you can create an account for yourself and log in and uh, that will actually give you a lot more features uh, and I have already done that with my Google account.
and uh, once you have your uh, account then it will allow you to uh, map some of your own publications to a unique id etc so let us uh, search for the same keyword here and uh, you would also see a large number of uh, articles that will be uh, coming up and uh, if the authors have provided the full text uh, they will be available here or if they are available on the website of the publisher for free you can look at it but definitely the abstract uh, is available for you to read and just like in google scholar uh, you have an ability to pick up the uh, bibliographic information of an article so let us say i want to talk about uh, uh, professor perepesco's article here and uh, then uh, here there is a um, uh, link called site so click on that and the bibliographic information is uh, now available uh, in the form of bibtech or endnote or other formats and uh, what is available is uh, readily there uh, in the bibtech format so it's already highlighted and kept ready for us so we can just copy it and come to our uh, uh, overleaf document open in the references file go to the bottom and paste the article information now the nickname uh, is a bit long so I would shorten it to Perepesco 95 okay and come to the main text and we now make a reference to that um, you can say that uh, Perepesco has published several articles in the topic of undercooling okay and we pick up the item corresponding to that particular article and press an enter sign and it's included and when we compile it you would see that this uh, reference information has entered has been entered automatically and uh, the number the number corresponding to the article is uh, uh, three so there's a third reference that we have included in the text so in that way uh, you can actually uh, pick up uh, articles from semantic scholar uh, read about them and uh, pick up the bibliographic information using the site uh, uh, button here and uh, include them in the a document that you are preparing using overlay. Now Harvard University has a, a website where they have uh, provided uh, the literature information about uh, astronomy and uh, physics and uh, the indexing information for all these articles is also made available for free and uh, here you can actually also use to search for topics in uh, the area of physics luckily the topic undercooling comes in uh, the topic of physics so you can search for that and uh, let us say we want to search for uh, uh, articles that contain in the abstract the word undercooling and uh, click on that and uh, you would uh, see that there are several uh, articles that will be listed uh, these are actually not necessarily only from the physics journals they will also be from uh, material journals and uh, they will be listed uh, as per the uh, date okay you can change that uh, way of listing to citation based or uh, author based etc so the most recent article will be at the top and uh, here also the same uh, thing holds uh, you have the article and you can click on it you can uh, look at the abstract and make up your mind whether you want to read this article further and uh, on the right hand side there is a link available to open the uh, full text uh, if it is available from the journal for free you can read it otherwise you will have to write to the authors and uh, get it for you to uh, read further and uh, let us say this article is something that is useful for you and uh, you want to talk about it then you can pick up the citation information of this article by clicking the uh, link export citation on the left side I click on that and uh, it can provide the information in uh, a large number of formats uh, and uh, our favorite one is uh, bibtech so we would actually pick that bibtech format here and you can just copy paste this is how this copy then uh, paste that information in the references file at the bottom 
you can keep appending like this uh, indefinitely so we'll pick it up there and uh, the nickname is a bit long so I will change the nickname as Gino for example Gino 20 okay and uh, come to the text and make a reference to that so I will make a reference again in the same sequence Gino et al have studied under cooling of magnetic materials recently okay and i pick gnu20 item and recompile okay so once i recompile you would see that the reference we just picked up uh, is now available uh, here at item number four and uh, it is available as the fourth reference that is in the text okay you can have uh, uh, other articles uh, from this uh, website uh, uh, which is basically ads website of the harvard university uh, you can search for articles based upon various fields as uh, given here and uh, uh, pick up those articles bibliographic uh, information for free the full text of course is subject to still availability from the respective publishers but at least the uh, citation information is available for you for uh, searching for free so one more source of uh, literature items uh, i would show you using the archive website arxiv org so this is a website where uh, physicists uh, uh, store the uh, versions of their manuscripts before they send them for review uh, so that the timestamp on their original work is uh, kept intact and often these uh, preprints uh, are uh, as good as the final publications and uh, we have ability to look at them and all these preprints have a a unique link also made available so technically they are also eligible to be cited in an article so you can actually start searching for a keyword we will uh, perform the same survey here also on undercooling and uh, let us look at the articles that come out you could see that uh, it lists various articles and uh, we can pick up some article let us say this one here and click on the link it says archive colon and then the ID and uh, you can see the article the abstract uh, read the abstract to see whether you want to read further and uh, uh, the preprints are always available uh, in full format so you can click on the pdf or postscript formats download the full article and read it and uh, if the article uh, uh, is uh, published then that will also be known to us uh, here on the right hand side uh, is the link for this article on google scholar or semantic scholar where you would actually know whether the article has been uh, published in a journal later on uh, in any case you can actually go ahead and start uh, uh, exporting the citation for this article by clicking here and uh, you can actually pick uh, any format uh, and we pick the pip tech format and so the article information is readily available for us to uh, copy paste in our uh, document so we copy that here come to the references file go to the bottom and paste and uh, we will keep the nickname uh, shorter baker 20 and make a reference to that article here so we can say that baker et al have started under cooling okay and uh, compile so once you compile you would see that uh, the you know, baker's article is coming as the fifth bibliographic item and in the references uh, that article is also now uh, cited here okay so you can see that uh, we are able to now include articles that we can pick up from uh, archive.org website as well so you would see that the uh, archive website is uh, very useful uh, however it is uh, quite limited uh, to the physics community lastly i would like to show uh, how to pick up uh, bibliographic items from uh, academia.edu website so this website is also a uh, site uh, similar to researchgate and uh, you need to log in to uh, uh, look at the different items that are actually stored uh, 
a large collection of articles I would say 120 million articles so you can use your Google ID to log in I have already uh, signed up so I'm able to get in now and uh, you can then start searching for articles using this uh, search feature at the uh, top left so we type the same keyword and uh, you can then um, see that there are a lot of hits that will come up uh, quite a large number I would say from the collection and then uh, we can actually uh, uh, look at the uh, original articles because most probably the author would have uh, uploaded the preprint of that article uh, and uh, you could then uh, download that uh, article to read and uh, the article will contain the bibliographic information at the top and you can use that to uh, enter the information into the uh, bib file in uh, uh, overleaf so take for example here uh, some article that uh, is of interest for example here let us say uh, download here you would see that the uh, name of the journal journal of alloys and compounds the volume 379 the year 2004 the page numbers 188 to 192 are given along with the title and the authors this information is now sufficient for us to enter the bibliographic information manually uh, into the bib file So for that, what we would do is uh, uh, come to the references file and uh, at the end you could then add it manually and once you do that you are able to also include any other article uh, that you may need for your uh, literature survey and that way you can actually uh, comprehensively make your uh, literature survey uh, using uh, uh, sources that are available for free uh, when you are at home. Uh, trying to write up a document uh, by looking at the literature. So we have uh, looked at uh, Google Scholar, ResearchGate, Semantic Scholar, Harvard website, Archive and Academia. I think that these are uh, sufficient to do a reasonable literature survey, particularly in the physics based uh, literature and that will help you actually get going with some amount of uh, uh, reading when you are at home and not connected to your university resources for library. So uh, you would now edit the text uh, to make it little bit more meaningful by writing some more comments on each of these articles because you have read them and uh, then once you have uh, finalized the article uh, you can actually uh, uh, recompile and uh, uh, see whether the output looks uh, good enough for, for uh, your write up and once it is done then you can save a copy of the PDF document for yourself by clicking on this link PDF. it will open up as a PDF file that you can save to your desktop and you can then uh, print it out and submit as uh, required for your courses.